700 million years ago, the glaciers that existed wiped out entire mountain ranges, leaving the necessary minerals and algae that built the ecosystem we live in today. There are dozens of different types of animals that have been discovered, such as vertebrates, insects, and reptiles. This adds up to almost 2 million different species of animals on our Earth. Thousands of years ago, we began recording and researching the different animals to better understand these creatures we share our planet with. But in time, we have found that some species of animals can become completely extinct. This means that their numbers become so few that eventually these animals were unable to reproduce and continue existing. An example of an animal that went extinct and no longer exists would be the mammoth. Researchers have gathered evidence of their existence from fossils and have been able to learn from them that way. But some animals miraculously reappear after being extinct for years, some even centuries. Today on Top Trending, we are excited to share 10 animals that came back from extinction. As mentioned before, we have learned from fossils about animals that existed millions of years ago. This also included everything we knew about coelacanths. Scientists found that several coelacanth species existed during the Cretaceous period. This means these fossils could have ranged anywhere from 145 million years ago to 66 million years ago. Due to the date of the fossils and the lack of sighting of these fish, scientists declared them extinct about 65 million years ago. That is, until one appeared in a trawling net in 1938. The first specimen was caught off the east coast of South Africa. This showed researchers that despite their fossil evidence, these prehistoric fish certainly still exist. Since 1938, 84 specimens have been found. They are large, plump fish that can grow up to more than 2 meters or 6.5 feet in length. The modern coelacanth appears to be larger than the fossils researchers have found, and they can live for up to 60 years. Research continues to this day on coelacanths, as they are believed to be important to our understanding of the transition of sea life to land life. The pygmy tarjir is a nocturnal primate that was found in Sulawesi, Indonesia. It was also known as the mountain tarjir, or the lesser spectral tarjir. They were believed to be extinct in the early 20th century. That was until the year 2000, where Indonesian scientists accidentally killed one while trapping rats. It wasn't until 2008 that scientists captured pygmy tarjirs that were alive. They caught two males and a single female. They were radio-colored to track their movements. Pygmy tarjirs are usually around 95 centimeters or 4 inches, and weigh less than 57 grams, or 2 ounces. Even though they look slightly like gremlins, they do not reproduce by dumping water on them. Instead, pygmy tarjirs are monogamous animals that breed twice a year. They are now enlisted as endangered species, but continue to be supervised by scientists to ensure they do not go extinct for a second time. It's hard to imagine any dog becoming extinct, especially a dog that has such a unique vocalization. 50 years ago, the New Guinea singing dog was thought to be extinct. Only within the last decade did a few sightings occur on the island of New Guinea. A group of researchers went on an expedition in 2016 to see if they could find these singing dogs. A few days after their cameras were set up, researchers found a pack of 15 New Guinea singing dogs, proving that they are alive and well and no longer extinct. The pack even included puppies, showing that these dogs are well on their way to increasing their population. New Guinea singing dogs often howl in a very high-pitched tune. It's also found that their howl will cause the other nearby dogs to howl. This howling is commonly referred to as a chorus howling. Hopefully now with the research from scientists, these doggos will have a better chance at surviving and populating the island of New Guinea once more. There is an ancient rodent family called Diatomus. By fossil record, researchers deem these little rats to be extinct 11 million years ago. But in 2005, researchers were proved otherwise when the carcass of the Laotian rock rat was found in a meat market near the Mekong River in Laos. Just like the coelacanth, scientists were wrong to assume these little guys were extinct. Local people refer to the rat as Kan Yu. It turns out these rats and the coelacanths listed before are examples of a phenomenon known as the Lazarus Effect. This is where a creature that was thought to have died out deep in the prehistoric past suddenly reappears. Appears. The Laotian rock rat is also sometimes called the rat squirrel. The rats are large with hairy thick tails that resemble squirrels. Even though their tails look like the tails you'd see on squirrels, their tails are actually limp. Their skulls are also very distinctive and have features that separate them from all other living mammals. First the coelacanth and then the Laotian rock rat. It makes you wonder what other sort of prehistoric beasts we can find in today's wilderness. The Bermuda petrel is a seabird that is commonly known in Bermuda as the Cahau. The nickname is derived from its eerie cries. They are a nocturnal ground-nesting type of bird, and Bermuda has adopted it as its national bird. For over 300 years, these birds were considered extinct until rediscovered in 1951. When originally found in 1951, there were 18 nesting pairs. Fast forward almost 75 years, and while we now know that they are not extinct, they do find themselves on the endangered species list. Initially, these birds were super abundant, but slowly disappeared due to habitat degradation and invasive animals. They are excellent flyers as they spend their first four to five 
five years flying over the sea before coming back to the islands to nest. Another reason these cahal birds have had their numbers dwindle in the last several centuries is due to their breeding. They only have one breeding season, and females lay only one egg during that season. Not only that, but only 40 to 50 percent of the eggs successfully hatch. The cahals mate for life and typically return to the same nest each year. Currently, researchers are increasing safe areas for the birds to nest on the islands and hope to increase the population so they are no longer considered endangered. The Cuban Selenodon has only ever been seen in Cuba. It's a nocturnal animal that has small eyes, dark brown to black hair, and is sometimes compared to a shrew. They're usually anywhere between 16 to 22 inches or 41 to 56 centimeters long, from nose to tail tip. It almost looks like a large brown rat with an extremely long snout and a long, naked, scaly tail. In the early 70s, these little guys were thought to be extinct, but researchers spoke too soon, as four years later there was evidence that they still existed. Since they are nocturnal and mostly live underground, it's understandable every Everyone thought that they were extinct. The total number of Cuban Solendodons ever caught is 37, making this one of the rarest animals in the world. They are still considered endangered since they only reproduce one to three in a litter per year, and are hunted by the invasive small Asian mongoose that was introduced by humans in Cuba. One of the most interesting facts we were able to find on the Cuban Solendodons is that they are a bit unusual among mammals as their saliva is venomous. The South Island Takahe is one of the rare flightless birds left in New Zealand. Four specimens were collected between 1849 and 1898, but after that they were thought to be extinct. That was until they were famously rediscovered in the Murchison Mountains in 1948. They have since been bred and translocated to seven islands and several mainland sites in New Zealand. The South Island Takahe has deep blue feathers on the head, neck, and underparts. It has a huge bill that is bright red that gets paler toward the tip. These flightless birds used to make their nest in swamplands, but since those lands were turned into farmlands, they were forced to move into the greenlands. They are monogamous birds that typically only lay around three eggs. Because of this, researchers are incubating fertilized eggs and are attempting to bring the population back up to 500. As of October 2017, there were 347 Takahe accounted for. Hopefully within the next few years that goal will be met, and more of the Takahe will be released into the wild to begin reproducing their young back into their native land. The Lord Howe Island Stick Insect is a species of stick insect that is native to the Lord Howe Island group. They were once abundant on the island and were used as bait in fishing. In 1918, a supply ship called the SS Macambo ran aground and brought black rats to the island. It wasn't long after these black rats became invasive predators that the Lord Howe Island stick bug was nowhere to be found. The black rats pushed several bird species into extinction on the island as well, which triggered expeditions by researchers to find any of the animals deep within their ecosystems. It wasn't until 2001 that researchers discovered 24 of the insects hiding under some shrubs. In 2003, two breeding pairs were sent to a private breeder and the Melbourne Zoo. By the beginning of 2016, the Melbourne Zoo had hatched 13,000 eggs and have sent eggs to several zoos around the world to establish distinct insurance populations. It's desired by researchers to bring a large population back to the Lord Howe Islands to counteract the invasive rats that still exist there to this day. The kangaroo rat has not been seen for over 30 years. In 1994, the Mexico government declared the animal extinct. That was until several weeks ago, when the rat was discovered along a narrow strip of Baja California's coast. Four rats were captured for scientific purposes during routine surveys. These rats get their name for having strong hind legs. The animal is able to leap more than six feet at a time with the powerful muscles. The agricultural conversion has led to native habitats being destroyed for fields and hothouses for tomatoes and strawberries. This was the leading cause in the dramatic decrease in the San Quentin kangaroo rat's population. Researchers in San Diego, California are currently coming up with a plan to breed and conserve the San Quentin kangaroo rat, as they are still in danger of being completely extinct. In 1866, the crested gecko was discovered by a French zoologist named Alphonse Guichnot. He was also credited for naming the species. For a full century and a half, the crested gecko was thought to be extinct, until it was rediscovered in 1994 during an expedition. New Caledonian crested geckos are the largest among the gecko species. Their length ranges from 8 to 10 inches, or 20 to 25 centimeters. One of the most distinctive features of these geckos are their hair-like projections above the eyes, which resemble eyelashes. This feature alone has given these geckos the nickname eyelash gecko. It's ironic because the eyelash gecko does not have eyelids. In fact, they use their long tongues to moisten their eyes and remove debris. So how did these guys go from being extinct to one of the most popular pets in the world? The export of wild crested geckos is now prohibited, but prior to that, people bought different specimens and started two different breeding lines in the United States and Europe. Now it's the most widely kept and bred species of gecko in the world. 